What's up, beautiful people? Welcome to the Dr. Joy Show, your prescription for total wellness, and I'm your host, Dr. Joy. Today we have a very interesting guest. We're gonna talk about gut, brain, health and how they're connected. But before we get started, you know what we do on the Dr. Joy Show. We take it down with three deep breaths. Are you ready? Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Last one, inhale, exhale. How do you feel? I know I feel great. I want to welcome my guest, Dr. Laura Rokos, to the Dr. Joy Show. How are you? Very good. Thank you for having me. Oh, you are so welcome. But I'm, I have to do something that you asked me to do, so I'm going to read this. And this is very important, ladies and gentlemen. So, so listen, watch, just hear what I have to say. The views and nutritional advice expressed by Dr. Laura Rokos are not intended to be a substitute for conventional medical service. No information offered here should be interpreted as a diagnosis of any disease, nor an attempt to treat or prevent or cure any disease or condition. If you have or suspect that you have a medical problem, promptly contact your health care provider. So now that we got all of that taken, taken care of, I want to re-welcome you. Well said. Thank you for sharing that. So, who is Dr. Laura? Uh, well, right now I am a nutritionist, but my bio, if you read my bio, I am a retired pharmacologist. I spent almost three decades in the pharmaceutical industry doing drug discovery and development, but I also have this PhD in food science from hmm. Rutgers University. And, you know, after lots of years spinning my wheels, making drugs that wasn't really bringing health and wellness to people the way I thought it should be done. I kind of took a step back and thought, well, how should you know healthcare be presented to the masses? So I kind of did a little soul searching, did some digging, and came up with Eagle Rock Nutrition, Love it. which is my healthcare practice where I provide dietary and lifestyle intervention for disease prevention and health maintenance instead of therapeutic health care. So the body heals itself, that's your premise, and you get down to the root cause of disease. Did I sum it up correctly? Excellent, yes. All right, so we talked about, what did we talk about on the uh, Joy of Living show, the radio okay, show? on that radio show, we just focused on gut health. We just talked about the, the health leaky of the- leaky gut. Uh, well, we broached leaky gut. We just really talked about, you know, um, conditions that represent gut, what's called here, a fancy word for you, uh, dysbiosis, gut dysbiosis. Gut I don't dysbiosis. think I use that word on the show, but that's really what it's called. But what would most people know it as? Poor gut health. Okay, so right? how do you know when a patient has poor gut health and what are some, some of the symptoms? Well, certainly chronic constipation and bloating. All right, loose. At the same time? Usually it is at the same time because when you're constipated, you're usually bloated. Bloated, okay. Right? But I'm an ace at fixing that. So if you have that problem, come see me. I will fix you right up. All right, but also it could be a loose stool. It could be uh, indigestion. It could be reflux. Uh, it could be lots of food allergies, food allergies, even seasonal allergies. You but know? How, do you, how do you determine food allergies? on you know on a client well i never even told you this i just started doing blood testing so i've partnered with a company so i now can do blood testing in my office i have a phlebotomist come in take your blood we submit your blood for food testing to a company that can do 96 different food allergies oh be, okay because i know plenty of people that have bloating around the middle and that have that constipation situation going on so do you think that it's you know, because of food allergy? Well, well constipation, all right, so let's talk about this, which is what we talked about on the radio show. The constipation and the bloating, right? That's just because you don't have the right kind of bacteria uh, okay. or enough bacteria in your colon. Do you remember we talked yeah, about that? Yeah, we did, but you know, right. a, lot, a lot of my viewers might not have heard that show. So if you want to repeat something, feel right, right, feel free. But so you were saying the symptoms. So we can just go through those. So you said allergies, chronic pain, fibromyalgia? 
fibromyalgia also, uh, so fibromyalgia, I just had a patient yesterday who has really bad fibromyalgia, which is chronic pain. They call it the FLC syndrome, feels like crap. <laughs> oh, geez. <laughs> right? When you just feel awful all the time, tired, migraines, pain, systemic pain, that's so where fibromyalgia. So where does it come from? Toxins, it's just toxins in your environment, toxins in your body. Some people are just very good at clearing those toxins from the body, while others are not, probably because of the, the poor gut health. So let me just explain to you the role of the bacteria in the gut, and that will kind of Go give for a it. little bit more clarity around this leaky gut business. Okay. All right, so you have a microbiome, which represents all the microbes that live in you and on you. All right, there's hordes, 10 times more at least microbes in you and on you than all your human cells combined, all right? but it's the bacteria that live in your colon, your large intestine, that are running the show. Those bacteria help you digest food, extract nutrients from the food that you're eating, they turn your immune system on, they turn your immune system off, but most importantly, they produce the hormones and the neurotransmitters that regulate your appetite and how you feel. So poor gut health mm -hmm. also correlates with depression and anxiety. And you know, one more thing that they do, one more thing that the bacteria in your colon do, is they help to ensure the integrity of your digestive tract, which runs from your mouth to down there, right? Your, your digestive tract is lined with epithelial cells and a mucus lining layer. Mm -hmm. They ensure that those cells are proliferating at the, and you have a nice intact digestive tract. When you have a breach in that digestive tract because you don't have enough bacteria down there, right. you can suffer from any of the things that we just talked about, including drug addiction. What? Including drug addiction? Yes. What kind of drugs are we talking about? Because you any, are a pharmacologist, right. so you develop them. So talk a little bit about that. Really, it, it's any any drug, alcohol, that any addictive substance. But let's because we're uh, because the opioid crisis is so newsworthy. Yeah. Right. And I feel like uh, we're just keep, we keep throwing the same solution at the problem. We just keep spinning our wheels with focusing on behavior. But people need to understand that the biology of an addictive pers person is different from a non-addictive person. There's something biologically different that needs to be corrected. It's not just in the behavior. So several of my drug addicted patients definitely present with bad leaky gut. And when I do a gut restoration on them, I can reverse that drug addiction, all right? But what is the holdup? My only, my only requirement is that you have to be compliant and not all. So what is that process? <laughs> that I know I, compliance is huge. Right. So what are the steps? Or can you share a little bit without okay. giving the total story because, you know. Time. Time. <laughs> it's five steps, super simple. Clean up your diet. A lot of drug addicts have a very limited diet. Well, they yeah. like to, you know, they're really addicted to their processed carbohydrates and sugar. That is not what the bacteria in your colon eat. Your bacteria in your colon, they eat leafy greens, oats, uh, you know, uh, asparagus, artichokes, garlic, onion, things like that. It's called prebiotic fibers. Mm -hmm. Those are fibers that only the bacteria digest. You do not digest them. They ferment them. And of course, some people have a hard time fermenting those things. Yeah. Harder time than others. Right. So, you know, we have to take this process slowly. So clean up the diet. You, if you don't have the right kind of bacteria or enough bacteria, good bacteria in your in your gut, you may need to take a probiotic. Mm -hmm. um, there are some nutrients that are very important for gut health. The first one that comes to mind is vitamin D. Most people, especially in the Northeast, are chronically deficient in vitamin oh, D. Of course, we stay inside. Um, vitamin D functions more like a hormone than a vitamin. Mm -hmm. All right, not only does it help you extract calcium 
from the foods you eat so that you have strong bones, but it signals through a vitamin D receptor which turns your immune system on and off and is culpable in so many other things. So vitamin D is super and important. And what level of vitamin D should, do you recommend? That's a great question. There, because there are different levels. That's uh -huh. right. 3,000, 5,000, 10,000, 50,000, which you need Dr. a prescription. Joy, you know would you know, right, which you need you know, a prescription for. Yes, okay. 50,000 you need a prescription yes. for. But you know your stuff because that was an excellent question. All right, get your blood tested because vitamin D at excess levels can be toxic. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be absorbing too much calcium because then you'll have calcium deposits in soft tissue and get kidney stones. All right, so get Ooh. your vitamin D levels tested. All right, everyone could take roughly about 1,000 international units I use a day. That's like a low dose. That's mm -hmm. like that's like a nothing. Mm -hmm. All right? But if if you if you come up short about 30, you know, 30 milligrams per deciliter, it's a 30. That's kind of low. Um, I'll do like 5,000 I use a day. So is 5,000 safe for five, any anyone anybody pretty five, much. 1,000 is safe. 1,000 is safe. 1,000 is, is the safe. safest. Right. Okay. 1,000 is the safest. 5,000 if, you, if you're deficient. Right. After a year, I get your levels tested again, and we'll take it from there. Because I don't want to be the person that overdoses my patients on um, vitamin D. But if you have a, if you have a, if you have, suffer from indigestion. Mm -hmm. uh, GERD. GERD, right? Mm. All right. So then I'll do things like drink some aloe. Aloe. Is we put it on wounds for right. healing. You have a wound in your digestive tract, and that needs to heal. All right. And so then also know your triggers too. Like for me, red wine, mm. and because of the sulfates yes. and chocolate. Oh, I love chocolate. Oh well, God. that's for step one: cleaning up the diet and oh. getting rid of alcohol, chocolate, and yeah. caffeine. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the coffee thing has yeah. to go. So why right. does leaky gut correlate with cognitive disorders? All right. Excellent point. All right, so your digestive tract is also known as your enteric nervous system. Mm -hmm. You have the same neurons and um, neurotransmitters in your enteric nervous system as you have in your central nervous system, which is your brain. All right, and what connects the two? You have a vagus nerve that runs from your enteric nervous system to your central nervous system. And, where, and when that vagus nerve is disrupted by, say, a concussion, right. Right, you can uh, sever the process. You can sever the, con the communication between enteric nervous system and central nervous system. So now the neurotransmitters that regulate how you feel are not going to signal to the brain. So when you say concussion, it could be any traumatic, any trauma to your physical being. Car accident, yes. sporting event. Yes. Getting hit in the head with a tennis racket. And aren't we reading about football players who are depressed? Yes, <laughs> we are. Yes. So you might have cracked the code here, Dr. Laura. <laughs> I didn't Laura. crack the code. I can't take credit for this. Yeah, but you're helping, though. You're helping but, uh, spread, yeah, right. spread the information. So how do you restore gut health? So we, just like we said, we clean up the diet, we add a probiotic, we may, you know, we may have to eat, add some healing foods, we need prebiotic fibers. If you're gonna spend a few dollars on a probiotic, don't waste your money by going back to carbs and sugar. You have to But feed, they're good carbs, right? You have to feed them the good carbs. You so have to give me a list the, of the good carbs. Uh, just like I said, but let me explain what a prebiotic fiber is. Okay, you right? can do that too. That's like a resistant starch from banana. Mm -hmm. All right, unripened bananas, all right, uh, potato, and corn, believe it or not, not the genetically modified corn in the right, United right, States. Right. Usually comes from, by the way, Australia. Any, any non GMO corn or corn product is going to come from Australia. Okay. All right, so people that, so I prescribe what's called medical foods that can only be prescribed by a practitioner such as myself, all right, and these um, medical foods contain um, these prebiotic resistant starches, which are very good for the bacteria that live in your gut, that once you get them proliferating, they will take care of you, all right? But the other thing is the stress, all right? You need to, you need to deep You see breathing. me fanning, right? Deep breathing. You see me fanning. Yeah. And the reason why I'm fanning is because, come on, Dr. Laura, everybody has stress. The, I call it the good, the bad, and the ugly, right? Mm -hmm. But it's how you manage it. All right, but where does the stress come from? It comes from your adrenal glands, which sit behind your kidneys. 
all right? That's oh. where the cortisol is made, uh -huh. all right? When we want to lower those cortisol levels, right, we eat comfort food. Comfort food is not comfortable because it tastes good. We like eating macaroni and cheese and pizza because it literally lowers the cortisol levels. That's why you like eating that food. All and right? it tastes good too. <laughs> but I will tell you that when you have healthy gut bacteria, they will ensure the development of this, it's called an HPA axis, hypothalamus pituitary adrenal. All right, there's a communication between those three. It lands at the adrenals where the cortisol and stress hormones are made. Right, right. When this is good, that is gonna be the, good. So start at the base. If, it's, if the base is good, everything Finger rolls up, up instead it rolls down. down. Right. Whew. Okay. So talk about some studies. I know that you've done several because you've been in you, you've been in this game 30 years, right? So what is your what is one study if you could just choose one study that you found most interesting that would be good for the viewers to hear? Well, can I do two? You can. <laughs> we have time. Because I have to do two. Well, first of all, I just want you to know that in all my years doing drug discovery and development, I wasn't doing anything like this. All right, so once I stepped away from the bench, and, and, and tooling at the bench was great because it's just like cooking in the kitchen, mm. but once I stepped away from that, you know, it took me a couple of years to flesh all of this out. But okay. This is what I've noticed. All right, so who, who presents with a lot of anxiety and depression? My elderly population. When you get older, the va bacteria in your colon, they get old too, mm -hmm. all right? And so part of that cognitive decline, the anxiety, comes because that enteric nervous system is not being developed. So I typically prescribe certain kinds of probiotics to my older patients. And it w wasn't until like I really understood this whole gut-brain process that I understood why I have specific older patients who when they run out of their probiotic, they are literally coming to the office, not at the time of their appointment saying, I'm running out of my probiotic, I really need more, can I get it tomorrow, mm -hmm. right? And I always I would thought like, oh, I'm really glad that they, they like taking their probiotic, but now I understand that it really has a bona fide therapeutic effect in fostering the develop of that development of that enteric nervous system. And it's not just one patient, it's multiple. And uh, I have my patients fill out like a scoring system mm -hmm. just to make sure that they're getting better. Mm -hmm. And I see like, you know, I add the pro, I clean up their diet, we add the probiotic, and you can see their mind scores going go, up. Go up. So you actually, because you have the background in nutrition, you give your clients, patients, a diet that they need to follow. And not everyone gets the same diet. Well, right? they shouldn't get the same diet. Like, mm -hmm. you wouldn't give me bananas because bananas, <laughs> I don't get along with them. And so the person has to know between you doing a test to see what their uh, uh, reaction is to certain foods, they also have to know and be completely 100% honest with you to say how these foods react Absolutely. in their own system. No one ever leaves my office without telling me what they don't like. Okay. Right? And most of my patients are just let you know are not allowed to eat bananas. Yeah, no, I don't <laughs> do, I can't do the I can't do the banana thing. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so, so second patient. Yes, right? second patient. So now 14. So now we're going in the opposite direction, a right. child. So yeah, so yesterday the day before, I had um, groups of autistic people come to my office and we're I'm trying to teach them how to eat. All right, I thought the parents were coming. It was actually the, like about uh, between the ages of say 18 and say 25, uh, 10 kids uh, yesterday, 10 kids the day before. So talking to them about you know their diet. So okay. I have a 14 year old, all right, who um, nonverbal, right, um, but comes to me with the triglycerides and cholesterol levels of an 80 year old man. Ooh. Yeah, and I'm, um, you know, wondering what is up with this. All right, so fats are made in your liver. So I'm thinking, like, why is a 14 year old, why does a 14 year old have a fatty liver? Mm -hmm. All right, so we do the whole thing. We clean up the diet. I add a medical food, I add a, a, a resistant starch. You know, I get the probiotic in to, to get this going again. All right, 
we clean up the diet, get rid of all the artificial flavors, artificial colors. We are very you fixated. You see my eyes? Yep. Yeah. So that means the parents, you said 14 year olds, so that means the parent also has to be compliant all with in, that. All in. They have to be, mm -hmm. or else it's not going to work. All right, three months later, they bring me the blood work back. Three months. Cholesterol, total cholesterol, triglycerides, LDL cholesterol, bad cholesterol, the good cholesterol, everything is normal. Everything is better in just three months. Wow. Which corroborates a study that I read where um, communities, a South African community swapped the diet with an American, African American community in the United States. They swapped diets and saw how the gut changed. The, the guts swapped, the bacteria in the gut swapped, the health of the people swapped when they went from highly processed diet to, you know, um, mm -hmm. healthy starch, healthy fiber diet. Right. And that happened in just two weeks. So which is two which? Because you mentioned two populations. All right, so he, here's my, so, so, all right, the, all right, the, the good diet made the population with the bad diet healthier and the community with the resistant starch diet that got the processed food and the sugar. Is that South African? Yes, the, the so South, South Africans South, got, got, got sicker and the African Americans got, got healthier. healthier. Okay. In okay. two weeks, right? So here, here's my 14 year old autistic child. In three months, mm -hmm. normal cholesterol levels, right? But the one thing that the mom was super happy about was that he didn't have a healthy bowel function. He was wearing diapers at 14. Aww. And he said, well, now he has a solid bowel movement. He can control his bowel function and doesn't need diapers. That's a super... Stopped wearing that's diapers. That's a super <laughs> success story. Super. So congratulations <laughs> right. on that. So what's on the horizon for Dr. Laura and Eagle Rock Nutrition? Oh, I want to have my uh, a show just like yours. And you'll be on my show. <laughs> and you'll tell me everything that you're doing when you're not at the studio. When I'm not... Oh, well, I do a lot of stuff. But right. yeah, okay. But, so anyway, well, first of all, I'd like everybody to go onto my website, EagleRock.com. That's okay. E-G-G-L-R-O-C-K.com. Spell it again because most people spell eagle differently I than know. you. So that is an acronym for my children, by the way. That's why it's spelt weird. E G G L R O C K dot com. It's spelt Eagle Rock, but pronounced Eagle Rock, thus the logo, which is the flying eagle. Go onto the website and you will see everything that we're doing at Eagle Rock Nutrition. Tonight we're having movie night. We're going to watch a, docu a documentary called uh, Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead. All right. Uh, this week we're going to do a gardening tutorial. All right. I'm going to uh, have a, uh, a cooking class. Yeah, so you had. Yeah, I remember seeing something about you having. A uh, uh, chef on Chef Nadia, she's awesome. Yes, yes. Yeah, so she's coming back, and we're going to do meal planning for diabetics on August twenty first in the office. Okay. All right. And, and where's your great. office, Laura? My office is at three ninety seven Chestnut Street in Union, New Jersey. And you take? I take all forms of health insurance, including. Medicare and Medicaid. That's very important that very you needed, important. You needed yes. to state that. So mm -hmm. practical tips, two or three, pr we have a couple of minutes, two or three pra practical tips that you would like to share with the viewers. Eight to 13 servings, a serving is only a half a cup. It's a teeny tiny amount, it's like this much. Eight to 13 servings of fruits and vegetables every day mm -hmm. and a probiotic and have your vitamin D levels tested. Those are very good and everybody could take the 1,000 level. Yes. No <laughs> downside. D. No downside to taking a thousand IU's yeah, of use. vitamin D. Okay. Especially if you live in the Northeast. Especially. Okay, that's great. So again, how can viewers contact you? Go right to the website www.eaglerock.com. E G G L. ROCK.com. I'm getting a new website. Wait till you see really? my new website. My admin, Daphne Man Manzione, she is knocking it out of the park. You will share your email address and you will be invited to all of the events that we host at Eagle Rock Nutrition. And you have, I know you had a radio show, Eat Right with Laura. 
Can the can my viewers get access to those podcasts? Yes. So okay, the podcast tell. runs weekly. I still have the podcast. It's Eat Right with Laura podcast. Okay. And when you go into the website, you'll it's see there. the link to the podcast because Daphne just put it there. All the podcasts are there. And uh, we'll do a podcast together. We can do that, too. Yeah. We can do that, too. Well, thank you very much for being a guest on my second show, The Dr. Joy Show. And um, amazing stuff you're doing. Keep thank it you. going. So are you. Same. Keep thank it going. Thank you for having me. Sure. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, stay healthy. Be blessed. Well, I should have said it the other way. Be blessed. Stay healthy. See ya.